Welcome to the tips and tricks video where we will cover everything around the engine system of the HPH Shark. Let's start here with the engine control unit, so called SDU. First of all, we switch on the main engine switch so that this one powers up. Ignition is still off. That's important. Then we check here the voltage of the starter battery, which is 16.1 volts. The recommendation is to charge the battery before the flight if it's less than 16.0 volts. And then we have the motor battery, which is the one which is necessary to retract and extend the motor. And we can see here the fuel level. The lower bar here is the fuel tank in the fuselage. The upper one is the tank in the wing. And then you can see the temperature of the water for cooling. In the upper right hand corner, you can see the mode. It's now in the automatic mode. But if you would use, for example, here, this switch, then you are directly in the manual mode. So if you use the switch here, then you're automatically in the manual mode, not in the automatic mode. To get back into the automatic mode, you need to retract it completely. And then you can use this one here for the automatic mode. There you can see it's in the automatic mode. You don't need to use this switch up on the right hand side. This switch here is for the automatic mode. This one is for the manual mode. And then we have here this rotary encoder, which you can rotate. You can switch here between pages. Here is an arrow page with warnings and arrows with all the logs. And then you can go to the next page. That's the service page. But this one is also important to refill the fuel. Then on top here, we have the fire alarm test. There's a sensor at the engine compartment which tells you that there is over temperature and that there is a fire. But that's only for the test. And then you see the message how it would be when there is a fire. Now it is time for the daily check of the engine. We will extend the pylon here up to let's say 45, 50 degrees. Like this. Should be fine. What is very important when you extend the motor is that the ignition is off and also there's one second safety feature. Here, this is the prop stop. We use it slightly so the sense of things, the prop stop is fully engaged and then the motor won't start. So that's an additional safety feature. And then of course, later on, we also need to rotate the propeller and with only slightly engaging the prop stop, we can still move the prop. So we extend the motor pylon only slightly so that we have a good overview here onto all the necessary parts which we need to check. First of all, we start here in the front. There are two screws to secure the whole pylon. They are very important. Then we have here a look at the starter. One tip on the starter, regularly lubricate the mechanism that disconnects the small gear from the gear rack. Two drops of Ballistol gun oil every month is ideal. All these mechanical components here for the retracting mechanism. Of course here the belt, then the prop stop here, also the Bowden wire for the prop stop, you can see this. Then we have these rolls, four of them for the belt. They are also secured. Then below the propeller, we can see here the sensor, which detects in which position the propeller is so that we can retract it and extend it. And you can see here an orange light that this one is working. Of course, we also have a closer look at the propeller that it has no cracks, no damage and so on. The screws here are secured. Then we have a look at the Rear side, also these screws are all fine. We have this cable, which should be like this. We have a look here on the inside if we see some water from the cooling or any oil and so on. 
The exhaust needs to move free as well. That's fine. From time to time you can use here a little bit of grease or oil so that these ones here are lubricated perfectly. Then it is time to extend the motor completely. First of all, we have here an end switch, which we can also see at the SDU. We have a look here at the radiator, if it is fine. We have a look here at the coolant, if there are any air bubbles or if there is coolant in there. We also have a proper look at all these hoses and especially at all these clamps here. Then of course, we also check all the wires, the attachments and so on. Here we have the temperature sensor, which is also very important. And of course, we have the glow plugs here. We have the air filter, which looks also good. There's no dirt around, there's no oil around. And sometimes they break here. Check that it is secured properly and that it is fine. If it is dirty, you need to clean it and assemble it again. That's very important before you fly. Here we have also the bottom wire for the gas level, which is really important. And then we have here one more button to check. You can press it and then we should get this failure message at the SDU. Then we also check the linkages here for the engine doors. The engine doors are also not damaged at the front side. Then it is time to prime the motor four times or something like this. Then we will rotate the propeller really, really carefully. Even if we don't have the ignition on and also the prop stop is partly aligned, this is a two-stroke engine and it can just start to run with rotating the propeller. So be really, really careful. Never go there with your head in this direction. Always take care and be really cautious with your hands and that there are no other people around the prop. One, two, three, four. We rotate the propeller so that we hear that there is no mechanical problem so that we don't hear any any metal rubbing on metal. And we also listen here to the exhaust that everything sounds like it should sound. And be careful. About four turns or five turns. That should be enough. Everything sounds good. And now also there's new fuel in the fuel line to the motor, to the engine. So it should start immediately. Let's rotate it back to the position so that you can retract the engine and what's really important what's really a good tip always retract the engine after you made your daily inspection first of all you need to go into the glider make your pre-flight check and so on so it will take some time if the engine is here on the outside the uv light will damage all these rubber parts slightly everything here is in a black color so it also will heat up you can get gas bubbles and so on. So for this system, it is better to retract it, to only have it open when you start. And there's one really big safety thing. When you extend the motor, everyone around you um, thinks that you will start soon. So there is time for people standing here around the motor to go away. If you don't do this, if you just press the starter button, there is no time for anyone around here to go away. Of course, always check before you start the starter button, but it is one more safety measurement. Let me explain how to refuel the glider. First of all, we need this hose here to refuel the fuselage tank. Later on, we also need the fuel pump to refuel the wing tank. Let's start with the fuselage tank here. Therefore, we take this hose and we need to detach here the lower one, the lower left one, and then we can attach the hose. And then we use a fuel tank, which is down here. Put the hose in and then it's prepared. 
Then we're going back here to the SDU. Okay, we need to refuel our, our fuselage tank from extern and then we press on this button, refueling is running and it will switch automatically off when the fuel tank is full. One tip at the beginning, when you start refueling, take the canister up higher because at the beginning, if there's the air in the hose, it is hard for the pump to start. So you can just take this one higher for the beginning, then you can put it back down on the floor. The other tip is at the end, you will have here fuel in the hose. And of course you don't want to have the fuel in here to store this hose. That's why we also put it up like this. And then you have here a manual switch to turn on the pump. Then the fuel will go down here. And if it is empty, you can switch it off. And then of course we can also disassemble here this connection. And we can now start with refueling the wing tank. Therefore, we need this fuel pump here. And this fuel pump is for refueling the wing tank, but also for unfueling the wing tank. Therefore, it is important to have a look at this arrow here, how you attach it in the direction, because you can plug it in this way or that way. Now we want to put fuel from the canister into the wing. That's why we attach this side here onto the wing connector. On the other side, we use our same hose here, which we plug in here and which we put into a canister as well. You definitely need to take care that you don't fill too much fuel into the wing tank. That's why you should always unfuel the wing before refueling the wing so that you exactly know how much fuel is in the wing tank. Therefore, we highly recommend to use a 10 liter canister, which usually is about 12.5 liters in total if you fill it up completely, but the capacity in the wing is even slightly more. So we won't use the 20 liter canister for this refueling process. We will use this one here. And then we also put in the same hose into the canister. For the fuel pump, we also need some power. This connector here is the same connector as the motor battery. So we can use this internal battery, but of course you can also use an external battery. Okay. Now the fuel pump is running and we will just fill the complete tank in here so that we know it's about 10 or 12 liters. Before switching off the pump, we also put this hose up here so that all remaining fuel will go into the wing tank. Then we switch off the pump and disassemble all these hoses and wires as well. Unplug fuel pump and then it's important to plug in this hose back into the wing tank so that we are able to get the fuel from the wing tank to the fuselage tank in flight. It's recommended to put the hose in a plastic bag so that it won't get dirty and also that it doesn't smell. Then it is good to Take this one with you during the flight. If you make an out landing somewhere, you can refuel your fuselage tank. And also you can bring, let's say, 0.5 liters of oil to make the mixture. And then there is one more important step. We need to go back to the service tab. And we need to say here exactly how many liters we put into the wing tank. So this time we have, let's say, 10 liters or 11 liters. Here we can see the fuel capacity. 
both together, the fuselage tank and the wing tank together has now 19 liters. One last topic for the refueling process, especially in the air, of course, you need to get the fuel out of the wing tank into the fuselage tank. So it is recommended to first use the fuselage tank up to, let's say, one or two or three liters remaining, and then we pump the fuel back into the fuselage tank. Therefore, we need to use this feature here in the service tab, refill fuselage tank from the wing tank. Then you press on here. Then it will automatically pump here the fuel from the wing tank, which is the upper one, to the lower one, to the fuselage tank. One thing which you need to keep in mind is that it won't stop automatically. So you should switch it off by yourself uh, so the capacity is limited also in the fuselage tank. Don't wait too long, perhaps do it twice at a flight. One tip for the fueling process. You should lower the right hand wing when fueling the wing tank because the fuel flows down here. And if you want to drain the fuel, put up this wing here so that the fuel will flow out and help the pump. One more thing to take into consideration, if you unplug the hose in here, it is better to have the wing down because otherwise you have more fuel pressure. So if you have this wing down, the fuel will flow more into the fuel bladder here and then there is no pressure on the connector, so there won't be any drops of fuel in here. So that's not great for the smell. I hope you enjoyed this video and it helps you to safely operate the engine system. Check out all our other videos on the HPH channel and thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers, guys.